So I thought I'd make a video about my paragliding crash that after 15 years of flying put me in a wheelchair. I uh, have thought a lot about the different risk factors and none of them really seem to apply to this day so it was a bit of a weird one. Unfortunately I don't have any memory of the crash although I do have a few recordings and there are a few friends with me as well. Uh, yeah, just one of those things. So Dobbo and Lucas arrived this morning and that's Dobbo there now and Hubbard, he's been here for a while. Lucas is going to fly a local, it's his first flight in Europe. And yeah, the idea is to Vivi tonight. We're hoping to go to the RV. Great to have them come and join me. So this is the day before the accident. It was a social vol biv and I'd just come up from southern France with an awesome solo four day vol biv. So Dobbo is with me, but Ahmed I think has uh, got bored and sauntered off somewhere. I just called him on Zello to see if he can come back to join us. Dobbo was quite cautious the way he was flying. He was jet lagged and new to the Alps for a while anyway. But I was really comfortable. I'd been here over a month. This is awesome, Ahmed. Seen as he's come back, don't think he's heard me because I asked him to turn left slightly. If he heard me, on Zello. Dobbo, and uh, soon we're going to head over to camp. Ah, oh, this is epic. So this is probably the best place for paragliding in the world. At least it's one of the most popular. And the place where I crashed is in the distance to the right of centre. So that's the cloud Hamid was in. It's pretty high and it's got a mountain inside it. He's a crazy kid. So we had the valley wind on our back now. We saw that hill in the middle and then peeled off left onto the RV range. Happy to land? Okay, let's get a bit higher first. So Dobber had come over to support me for XP. But this part of the trip was him flying and enjoying himself and I wasn't being competitive or showing off. It's a lake and uh, some snow there. And I think this is a pretty safe place to land. Dobby's got his big ears on out there. Yeah, you should be able to pull off a safe landing here, I reckon. Poor old Hummer, he got on the wrong side of that and got swept down to Albertville. Bugger. It's flatter back here, Dobbo, there's less lift. Got his legs out, that's good. Looking good. I was taught to have my feet out for takeoffs and landings. Before this accident, I'd never broken my back, but I reckon I would have about five times if not for that. Hopefully, he comes back a bit closer. It really is the perfect place for this kind of thing with landings everywhere. Looking good, mate! Just steer right! Nicely done! Woo! Wow. <laughs> That's what cross country is like in the Alps, mate! <laughs> Take off at six o'clock and piece of cake! <laughs> <laughs> cool. It's Mont Blanc in the back, and we just so we launched from that nearby coal the next morning. Look out for some water. So Hammer's going beast mode. Nearly packed up his camp. <laughs> Save your energy, Hammer. You might have a big walk up tonight. <laughs> and uh, yeah, my tent's disappeared. We're just about ready to go. And that's where we came from yesterday. Beautiful spot, eh? And Hamid arrived at 1am. He was very quiet. We didn't even... I noticed him when I took a leak at about 4 in the morning. <laughs> yeah, you came over and yelled at me like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Bonjour, monsieur! <laughs> yeah. It's like it's morning already. <laughs> yeah, good times. It's going to be good to fly together today. I can't figure out whether it's more interesting to watch Hamid's mannerisms packing up or the little dog that Hamid met last night leading these goats around. We saw a couple of paragliders climbing up the ridge. I've gone out of view now and Luke's on his way up too from the other side. So 
So I actually went down from the coal above us to help Luke bring his gear up, which I guess would have been the last walk I ever did. Launching. So I'd flown this wing for a month or so and I'd taken it into some pretty uh, rough conditions and I was super happy with how it behaved. And that bag on the front, that was just the stuff that didn't fit behind me and I think putting it in there actually probably might have helped soften some of the impacts. Got and I don't know where it looks not too. It didn't look so good before. We yeah, just to find Luke because he launched quite a way before us and he was struggling to start. It's good to see him up high. Dobbo uh, noticed that he wasn't tucking in enough and he's doing the same thing and Harvard's struggling to launch so uh, I'm just going to cruise around. So really this is probably what caused the accident. The fact that when you're alpine flying you're often close to cliffs. Down there. It still hasn't launched. Hell. This range, the AV, works really well in the morning sun, but we were running a bit late and it was starting to transition to the afternoon valley breeze side. Um, it's still trying to launch. I doubled back on the route to kill some time. So this is where I dropped my phone last year, down this front part, and I launched on that side. See Hummer there, and it's a much harder flight now that we've left it so late because the wind's starting to push us away and the sun isn't as direct on the face. Next is to cross the Calder's RV. So, after crossing the Calder's RV, I crossed the RV range into the hidden side of that ridge on the left, and that's where I crashed. So, it's gotten pretty shitty. I've gone to the other side of the RV when I was gliding across the coal. It was very buoyant. There's Hummond. Nice and high, good. Uh, yeah, but there's quite a lot of wind coming this way, so... Yeah, just need to climb high and then I should be able to cross over towards uh, Pussy. So a minute or two later I crashed, I think on those cliffs on the left. I don't remember it, but Hummond said that I hit some rough air and then I spiralled down. My reserve came out but did not deploy. So afterwards the helicopter rescue guys sent this photo, which shows where I crashed. So this is Zello, the app where Humbert and I were communicating, just like using a radio as we're flying. Humbert was on the launch for the first while. But here is uh, just before the accident. Just reached through in the afternoon side. At the top, it seems to work. Hey Nick, are you flying on the north side or the south side? Uh, the Odyssey side, mate. The west side. Copy, uh, west side. Hey Nick, you okay? Nick, do you copy? Hey mate, it's Hamid. If he can hear me, uh, help is on the way. Uh, rescue is on the way. They will be there shortly. Hang in there. Hey Hamid, um, I just became conscious and I heard saying rescue is on the way. I'm going to try and untangle my leg from the risers and um, go stand somewhere sensible. Mate, that is so good to hear from you, man. I, oh, you went in hard. So good to hear you're okay. Um, but uh, stay there. The helicopter should be there shortly. I think you should fly uh, right now. Okay, but is there any chance the helicopter is going to blow my canopy around? Yeah, disconnect your uh, reserve and your wing. The helicopter is on the way. It just passed overhead. Hey, mate, is the uh, helicopter near where you are? Hey, if you can hear this, you should trigger your uh, spot so they have the exact location. Hey, um, the, the hospital is down there, that's all good. Um, I'm gonna get some help now. Okay, copy. Uh, let me know when you're uh, safe. I'll assume you're good now. Hey, Alps, I've found coconut pellets and, um, sorry? Yeah, I've, I've got something holopy right here, um, right the policy. Sorry, Nick, I don't understand what you just said. Can you please repeat? So basically, it looked like I was completely coherent and making sensible judgments and talking normally. 
And during that time, my other friend rang me up. We don't have a record of it, but it is positive that I said I could move my arms and legs. And then at the end, it looks like I probably was drugged by the medical crew, so I couldn't talk properly. But uh, yeah, I would like to hear a full report from their side of things to see what happened. But obviously, I hit the ground pretty hard, and they did the best they could to help me. And yeah, I don't know exactly when the uh, spinal damage became apparent. So for whatever reason, the track log is offset vertically. It's above the terrain, but yeah, flew back and forth along the ridge. Then I crossed the Calder's RV after getting up high there. And that's when it started coming in a bit from the left. So I decided to go to the windward side and then it crashed. And it doesn't seem like I moved around much on the ground, but I think the helicopter guys are saying I was getting dragged around the cliffs. I'm not really sure. And, uh, yeah, waited there a while and then, yeah, moved down a little ways. I'm not sure if I was being carried by the top of people or what then, but, yeah, got helicoptered over to that little lake, I would say. And then a short time later, they must have sorted everything out and whisked me back to Annecy. I got surgery in Annecy Hospital on my back later that night. So Dobbo, who I was flying with, is an emergency doctor and he sent this to Emirates to help organise my medivac several weeks after the accident. And basically everything healed by the time I left France, more or less, apart from the spinal injury. So aside from the physical injuries, I think the drugs hit me pretty hard. We got off them as soon as we found out about it. Yeah, Dobbo wrote this, but I somehow pasted a different picture, not the one that comes on my GoFundMe. And uh, yeah, I felt a bit like an old person trying to use Facebook. So the two things which I really emphasised when I was learning was always have your buckles up when you're wearing your harness. I don't have that problem because I don't have buckles, I just crawl into mine. And the other one was always have your feet out when you're near the ground. Now, I've damaged my back, so I don't know how... I did with that one because I don't have any memory, but maybe I hit the ground and became unconscious and then slid further down the cliff, or maybe I was just, just distracted with what was going on, or maybe I did use my feet and I still got the spinal damage. But my back protection was actually replaced the day before the accident, uh, and it's a relatively thin one, but it's certified. If you had a thicker one, then that distance that you've got to stop, so you can spread the the impact over a bigger distance so sure a thicker one would have helped you more but really nothing's going to help you as much as your legs unless your protection is the same width as your um your feet to your your waist so yeah i always thought a back protection it can be a little bit of a false sense of security because it gives you an impression that you're going to be safe but the, the safest thing is to land on your legs uh, we know, looking at my helmet, that I took a pretty hard knock anyway. So you can see I got my money's worth from my helmet. There's some pretty decent knocks there. Bit of blood on the front. Back's not too bad, but you can see it's actually caved in a tiny bit up there. So mum translated the medical imaging on the day of the accident. I had widespread swelling to the brain. Aortic tear a small lung leak, some damage near my internal organs and I also had a scrape off the front of my teeth, stitches in my tongue, scars over my face, arm and knee and I seem to have lost my smell after the head knock as well. I got one pinky bent and the other one I had some damage from the lines. So according to the audio recordings, I mean, I was still trying to disconnect myself from the glider and the parachute. The parachute got ruined by being torn. Like it, it, was, it didn't deploy, but it got ruined, I guess, after I landed. So whether that was me sliding down some rocks or it inflating and pulling me around the place and then dragging on some other rocks, I don't know. Uh, most of my clothes were cut in half by the helicopter people, but there was bloodstains on a fair bit of it. And, uh, yeah, I'm pretty lucky to be alive, really. And the main thing is that no brain damage or maybe a bit of residual brain damage. I like to talk about it that way.
So the harness got chopped in half unfortunately, so that was toast. The wing wasn't damaged much, that got returned, it was just a lend. And yeah, the parachute was thrown out. The helmet I'm keeping as a souvenir. And yeah, a lot of my other clothes are being chopped in half. I had one pair of shorts and then that became two halves. So I had to get some my girlfriend to buy me some before I got on the plane to head home. So I was in the French hospital about three weeks, then another three weeks in Australia, and finally I got transferred into the spinal unit in New Zealand, and I was discharged just after three months after the accident. So with the break at the bottom of my thoracic or the top of the lumbar part of my spine, I've got impaired bowels, bladder and sexual function, and no motor control of my legs, although I do have patchy and weird feeling for some of it. Uh, lost my sense of smell as well. But no psychological damage really because I don't remember the accident and I don't really see what I did wrong. It was a great trip with mates, one of many amazing experiences that I've had through paragliding.